Welcome back. I've personally really enjoyed the topic and talking about healing and being healed. It seems to be of paramount importance in the overall scheme of things. And I'm always personally interested in whatever it is that would facilitate um, my capacity to be a healer in the world and also to be healed myself. So yesterday we used a, a, a good example of a healing situation where the child comes in after the bee stings and the knee scrapes and the dog barks and the friend laughs at them and they're in hysterics and pleading. And of course, it seems like it's the end of the world to the child. And um, the parent knows that the child is going through a temporary situation. The child feels as though the condition is permanent. It's forever. It's everything is ruined forever. And while the parent can um, hear that and certainly acknowledge it, they don't they don't buy into it. They don't co-sign into that. And because of that, they're the great healing presence that the intuitive child knows to go to in the midst of a difficulty because they know that if they go to the source of healing, that it will appear for them because they've had an experience of that happening. Of course, uh, unbelievably dysfunctional childhoods with crazy parents notwithstanding, okay, parenthetic, parenthetically added, but the healthy parent in this case. So what is the quality that the parent has? And here's a key word today. Today's key word of all words is unflinching. It's this quality of being unflinching in the face of difficulty that builds the quality and the capacity to be a great healer and also to be healed oneself. It is said in many of the writings that I've partake, partook, partaken, God, brand new word. Anyway, uh, a lot of the books that I've read how about that, uh, they talk about the great spiritual sages, masters, the people who can heal being unflinching. In other words, they can look straight into the eyes, the heart, the mind, and the body of the one who is afflicted, and they don't buy in. They don't buy into it. Now, within our own mortal frames of consciousness, we can buy in, we can buy into our problems and conditions and circumstances um, 100%. And if we buy into it, and we are we flinch, and we fall into it, then we're stuck until a larger source of, source of consciousness can unflinchingly, unfailingly see the truth of our situation, see through the disease, see through the grief, see through the poverty, see through the the diminished or degraded situation. Now, of course, every time we interact with someone or an agency such as this with great healing power, it stimulates within us our own capacity to do this. And the simple bottom line fact of the matter is, in order to become a healer, one has to develop this unflinching capacity to look straight at the problem to look straight at the appearances th of things and not be swayed. Now, I'm not saying that this is easy. I'm saying this is probably the hardest thing all of us will ever learn. And yet every great healer has learned it and they've learned it through their own personal experience. In other words, at some point, they simply drew a line in the sand when appearances were, were overwhelming them and said, I shall rise above this and see through it once and for all. And when this quality is established in the soul, not only are we healed, because we can look all of, at all of our own problems and recognize, like the child, that our problems are temporary, they're not permanent. And the parent within us says, everything's going to be okay. And then it is. And then we can do this for our friends. And we can march about the planet being having the great fun of being powerful healers that we all know that we were born to be. 
I'll see you tomorrow. We'll chat it up about this. See ya.